We're back in the van <laughs> and we're here. I'm very excited. This is our first time that we've been really in the van to go on a trip in seven months. Yes, it's yeah. been a long time. The van's clean. It feels weird. It's, it feels <laughs> it's the cleanest it's ever been because we are bringing basically nothing. Way less stuff. Yeah, it's, it's actually really freeing and very nice. The fridge, though, has like two Red Bulls and one Powerade, so hopefully we and don't get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. I've ordered Cracker Barrel's finest peach blue soup. Look up! Oh my gosh. We haven't told you where in Texas we're heading, so now here we go. We are heading to San Antonio to meet up with our friends Jeff and Rachel. And if you're fans of the channel, you might remember those names because we met up with them when we went to our first national park of the trip, Big Bend. The totality for this eclipse goes through 13 U.S. states, and while we have the van and we could theoretically drive to any of them, we opted to go to San Antonio because the weather forecast doesn't look great for most of the path of totality, and at least in San Antonio, this drive is going to give us an opportunity to visit friends instead of just driving 14 hours to not see a solar eclipse and then have to go home. So that's why we're heading to San Antonio. Yeah, but look at that train, Colorado train. We've officially made it into Texas and our goal today is to drive about four more hours and end the day in Lubbock, which would make tomorrow's drive significantly easier. We almost drove straight <laughs> by Texas or into Texas. Good thing Joey was paying attention because I was in my own little world. That's okay. We're listening to a good book. Speaking of books. Oh, we love Audible. Do you guys like Audible? This isn't an ad for Audible, <laughs> but like over the last year plus road trip that we've been on, we've listened to almost 20 Audible books and we have a blog post that documents all of those. Um, I'll put that out in the comments. Sweet treat. Sweet treat. We've stopped at the van life mecca, the one and only. Cracker Barrel <laughs> Country Kitchen. <laughs> Country Kitchen. We're gonna see if they're gonna let us park here tonight. We're not the only ones here, but it's important to check. We don't wanna be those people. So we're gonna go find out. Maybe get a little snack. I'm getting Dinda. I'm getting Salisbury steak. We just finished dinner. It was better than I was expecting. It was way better than I expected. <laughs> but we're gonna spend the rest of the night in the van watching sports. We'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. 
morning. It's 6.30 a.m. First night back in the van, had to sleep. A little cramped. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> it's not the same size of a normal bed, um, even though we share the bed with the dog when we're at home. That's true. I felt very uh, cramped up. Oh, my back just cracked as I said that. Yeah, there was also noise from the garbage men as well as... Uh, Having to run the air conditioning right above us was loud. So we didn't sleep great, but we're up before the sun and we have a lot of miles to cover. So we're gonna get back on the road. But first coffee. Yes. Um, those are the garbage people I was talking about. <laughs> In all seriousness, huge shout out to Cracker Barrel. I know a lot of companies aren't allowing RVs to stay overnight in their parking lots anymore and they're one of the companies that still do and we're very grateful for that. So thank you Cracker Barrel. We've got our coffee. It's roughly a five and a half hour drive until we get where we're going. It's most likely going to be closer to seven. <laughs> and only dropped to 87% battery. That's really good. That's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> like it was pumping at 64 degrees, like. All night, we, we had it going chilly. We had to turn time. it off because we were getting too cold. When Joey turned it off, I thought we killed our house batteries and then to turn on the phone and see it at 87%. I was expecting to open this up and see it at like 25, <laughs> but 87, all right, we're good to go for today. There's a solar eclipse. We found it. Just kidding. <laughs> Alright Clifford, cover your ears. One day we may want to upgrade to one of those. But we would need a lot of money. One day we're going to join the Earth Roamer cult. So if y'all could like and subscribe, that would get us there quicker. After two very long days on the road, we pulled up to Jeff's house in San Antonio. No, <laughs> hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Remember Jeff? Him and his wife, Rachel, explored Big Bend National Park with us. We showed off Clifford to him since he's not seen it since it was bare bones. Oh yeah, the reveal. <gasps> This looks nice. Not bad for wow. two idiots. It feels, it's like nice and big too. After showing off Clifford, Jeff showed us San Antonio. Our first stop was to grab some lunch. We drove out to a taco place that was featured on the Netflix show, Taco Chronicles. Unfortunately, we pulled up to find it, it was closed. Luckily, San Antonio has plenty of great restaurants. So we went to the next best option, Taquitos West Ave. Founded in 2008 with the goal of bringing street style mini tacos from Jalisco, Mexico to Texas, Taquitos West Ave has become a well-known San Antonio staple. We each ordered a variety of tacos that completely filled the plate. The Jalisco style street tacos did not disappoint. They were flavorful and definitely gave us our money's worth with the amount of meat in each taco. We have a little bit of time in San Antonio, so we're gonna walk around downtown and Jeff is going to be our tour guide. The River Walk is a 15 mile urban waterway that travels through the heart of San Antonio. We were exploring the downtown portion full of incredible restaurants, boutiques, and attractions. This is all I wanted to do for my birthday. <laughs> It is a public park and is free to visit. Boat rides, attractions, and other activities do have various costs associated with them. We traded the river walk for the sidewalk and made our way towards the Alamo.
There's a lot of construction happening in this area, but the walk around the city was still nice. <laughs> we saw the Alamo. <laughs> I can remember it now. <laughs> Wandering around a new city is one of our favorite things to do. Jeff played the role of tour guide so well, making sure we could see as much as possible in such a short visit. We ended the day with some adult beverages and another delicious meal. San Antonio is a real foodie city. Just kidding, we didn't sleep there, we slept in the house. <laughs> we were on our way to a local coffee shop called Eight Ball Coffee. Jeff recommended it, he said it's really good, so we're gonna check it out. I love coffee. So far, the area in San Antonio where we've been spending time is really cute. And I guess the humidity, you can see my hair. It also, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of San Diego. There are these little bungalows, like walkable neighborhoods. Everything's straight. Ooh, I don't know where Everything's very colorful. It's like Vibrant, when we, yeah. we pulled in, Katie was like, how close are we to the ocean? <laughs> Which we're like well over two hours, yeah. but it just, it gives those beach vibes. Yeah, we've been very, very impressed with San Antonio so far. Every like six cement blocks, there's like a little story piece. Yeah. Little, we don't little know where the saying. start is, but we're getting little slivers of I, a I story. Know there is like a story. Like or, a cohesive. I think it's just like I, they ask all of the neighborhood, like we're pouring new concrete. Like, what's a sentence you want in your neighborhood? Here's another one. Let's see. It's like poetry. Yeah. These are, <laughs> are these haikus? Are we not? We're just too dumb to realize. <laughs> Anyway, Reputation Taylor's version. <laughs> After coffee in Formula One, we ventured out to Reese Brothers Barbecue. Reesboro's barbecue is self-described as elevated Central Texas barbecue with Mexican influence. We arrived just after they opened for the day and the line was already nearly out the door. We found a table in their outdoor dining area and indulged in some of the best barbecue in the city. Our group ordered just about everything on the menu and it all was fantastic. Stuffed full of barbecue, we spent the rest of the afternoon anxiously checking weather conditions for tomorrow's solar eclipse and doing some sim racing. We finished the day with cocktails and takeout dinner and then watched a movie back at the house. Morning. <laughs> it's very early. We just got all of our stuff back into the van. We put Kerrville into the GPS, and right now it's looking like there's not a lot of traffic, so knock on wood, we're gonna make our way into the path of totality. Let's go. Because we're gonna be sitting for the next I don't know, eight or nine hours. We need to get some food in the van we've come to. The one and only HUD. The 
that was my first time in that kind of store. My aunt moved to Texas a few years ago and she talks about it every time she comes for Thanksgiving or Christmas. And we finally went in and it was actually a really cool, really nice store. And we got something special for breakfast. He's guiding people in. Right. It's 8 a.m. We got to a rest area that we'd flagged on the way into San Antonio. And it's a good thing we got here early because we got lucky that that guy in the Jeep Gladiator was willing to move backwards so that we could fit. But now this we're is, all here. This is insane. Like, we knew it was going to be busy, but like, We've, yeah. there was like nobody has pulled off before this one rest stop. Everything was normal highway traffic whatever and then the moment we pulled into here hundreds of cars yes We have about two more hours until the eclipse actually starts, and we've just been sitting in the van and getting work done. So we're really grateful to have Clifford and Joey's over there getting our cameras ready. Let's take a look at the equipment. So our camera setup for this is, this is our R6 with our vlogging lens, the 15 to 35. This is gonna be our main camera. It's the R5, which is our super high megapixel camera with the long lens, the 500 millimeter. And then we have an R3 with a 24-105 on it as well. Then we have this really thick. Hey, I can see myself. Can hey. you? I, can, I cannot see through. We ordered these filters from B and H. Um, they said not that one, but these guys. They said that they were for the eclipse, and it looks pretty dark to me. I can't see it. Like <laughs> even looking straight through it, I can barely see it. So, hopefully, it's going to protect our cameras. If not, we also got some safety film, which is like is whatever it is and a little thing for our phones we are prepared yeah now if just the the outside and the sky would cooperate with us hopefully we'll get a nice show i have to put in contacts so that i can wear the um solar eclipse glasses so that's what i'm doing now now i can see We're about 15 minutes from the start of the eclipse. People are starting to get out of their cars, cameras are being set up, It's the excitement is building. And over the next few hours, I think it's about four hours, it's gonna go through all the phases of the eclipse. And this is actually not my first time going to a solar eclipse. In 2017, I went to the one in Wyoming with my parents. The sun is going in and out of the clouds, but we're still going to get our equipment set up, hoping for the best weather. Here we go. It's supposed to be starting right now with a little sliver, so we're going to hop on the cameras and see what it looks like. Well, it looks like a blank screen. <laughs> it's so dark, I got to find the uh, where the sun is. Joey's camera has a much bigger zoom, so it's a lot uh, harder to find it in the sky, but also gives a really good view. You can see the little sliver. We're about 30 minutes into the eclipse and the clouds are not cooperating. Nope. <laughs> but we have almost 45 minutes till totality, so we're hoping. Fingers crossed. Those start to go away. <laughs> Ooh, it's coming back. Joseph, where are you? Joey. Any times when the clouds break, we gotta make a run and try to get these shots.
the clouds broke again. And as you can see, about half of it is totally covered now. We're 30 minutes away from totality. We have 20 minutes until totality and those clouds are creeping in. We're just hoping they'll hold out. We're 12 minutes away. I'm so excited. It's starting to get darker. Five minutes till totality. The clouds got darker. It <laughs> got darker and they got thicker. Dang it. camera but it is so dark right now <laughs> look at it look up oh my gosh it's starting to get brighter What do you think? That was your first time in a total solar eclipse. I couldn't imagine not knowing that this was going to happen and this just happening. Uh, mind blowing. It was so dark. It dropped like 20 degrees like instantly. Um, it was it was cool. It's like I understand why people chase these across the world. I yeah, get it. It's the weirdest feeling. All right, so technically the eclipse is going to keep going till about three o'clock as it traverses the other side. Um, we're gonna hang out because we don't wanna sit in traffic yeah. <laughs> with all these people, but also we're hoping that these clouds break a little bit more so we can get more photos. It's been about 20 minutes since totality ended and the eclipse has yet to reappear in the sky. So we got really fortunate that for a brief moment, it appeared through the clouds and I'm feeling so grateful and so excited, but we're still, we're holding down the fort. We're gonna, we're gonna wait and really hope that it comes back out. We're now about 45 minutes after totality. Everyone's back on the roads. Unfortunately, the clouds have not broken. And I can't get over just how lucky we were that the first half of the eclipse and then totality for that brief moment had a clear view of it. I'm just, I'm in awe. I'm very grateful. I also somehow managed to get a bunch of mosquito bites. So that's lovely. Look at all the cars heading back towards San Antonio. Back in the van, Joey's posting some cool stuff on TikTok, Twitter, all of our other social media. So if you don't follow us there, go follow us because it's pretty good. And he's been working really hard since the eclipse. There he is. This has been a very quick trip. We spent two days driving down to San Antonio from Colorado. We spent a day and a half in San Antonio. <laughs> and now we're going to spend the next day and a half driving back to Colorado. San Antonio was a bit shocking. Uh, my sister went a few weeks ago for work and didn't enjoy any moment of it. And we had the exact opposite experience. We had a great time. I think it's a really cute town and there's so many fun little neighborhoods and great little bars. Like San Antonio like really surprised me. We also went in April and it was like nice weather, like we mid seventies. Jeff and Rachel said <laughs> anytime after now, too hot. Yeah, it's too hot. <laughs> So we're glad we came. We'll definitely come back, um, visit San Antonio if you're listening. Um, the overall experience of the total solar eclipse, I wish it was longer. And I know you can't like, I know you can't change that. I don't have the power to move worlds and planets and whatnot, but like, by the time you get everything set up on your camera and you see it, it moves a little bit and then you have to spend another 20 <laughs> seconds moving the camera to get the right shot. And then the clouds come, then you lose it again. Like 
so much happens in like a 10 minute time span that it's it's so hard to like truly enjoy it while also trying to get them banger photos. Yeah. I think that's the double-edged sword of content creation and trying to bring videos to YouTube is we are kind of taken out of the moment yeah. trying to capture the moment. I am still very grateful that we did this trip, that you drove yeah. us all the way down here. I think it was incredible to be able to see it, to be so fortunate for those brief moments of the clouds not being absolute there. Absolute darkness. It was it was incredible. It's and huge, weird. huge, huge, huge shout out to the people who were in this these particular rest areas doing crowd control and traffic yeah. control. It was really neat to see them and how prepared they were. And it was relatively smooth. Everything went well. Super people smooth. had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we're really grateful. So if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you like us and like our content, hit that subscribe button. And uh, hopefully we will see you next week when we are back in the national parks. Ooh. See you then.